screen now. Mm -hmm. Well, hello everybody, David Gross with Condi Systems, back with you to share a little bit of our recipe for sublimation success. And today it's my great honor to have one of my good friends with us, uh, Roger with Corel Draw. And Roger, uh, so good to see you. You know, I, I, I think I unfortunately learned to say your last name incorrectly many years ago. So help me one more time. How do you pronounce it? It's Wombolt. Pronounce it A as though it's an O. All right. So Roger is our good friend from Canada. Uh, how many years have you been with Corel? Uh, the end of July, it's going to be 27 years. That's absolutely incredible. Um, so you, you started Corel before you could learn to drive, right? <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah, pretty well, much. It's, uh... it's so good to have you. So today's um, live will be focused on the latest and greatest new version of Corel Draw, which um, I sort of call 2022. Some people talk about the March release that was for subscribers. But um, um, I think the good news is, and correct me if I'm incorrect or wrong, um, is you can still buy from us. You can buy the the real version, the version that is not subscription. And if you want to buy the subscription, of course, Corel sells that. Is that sort of correct, uh, Roger? Uh, yes, that's that's correct. We still have, and I'll, I'll, I'll cover that. We still have what's called the perpetual version, and that's 2021. We've dropped the uh, the date naming convention, so it's simply Corel Draw March release. Okay, got you. But what we're selling in the serial number download and run it, it says it's 2022, right? That's correct, yes. If okay. you go to help and about, it'll say 2022. Okay, got you. So um, why is there Corel Draw? Well, in many industries, um, Corel Draw is the program for producing everything from um, industrial, commercial to, to uh, sublimation to so many markets. Um, and so Corel Draw like other programs, has grown up over the years. Corel Draw is just packed with so many features, it's it's overwhelming. Many people will learn the features, of course, that are important to them. Roger's job will be to explain to us sort of what we're looking at for the new version of Corel and probably share a few of his, um, his Roger's signature secrets on Corel. So with that, Roger, um, oh, and so what we want to do is is we're we're very much open to taking questions. Uh, Roger's um, expose will be about thirty minutes, and then we can use the rest of our time uh, to to get Roger to answer questions for you. Questions to me is the favorite, uh, certainly the favorite thing. So with Roger, I'll let you take it away. All right. Thanks very much, David. Thanks for the great intro. It's going to uh, drop this down. Uh, you can see my screen, can you? Um, we can, yes. Perfect, perfect. Okay. You got full screen rodeo. Okay. We're ready to go. We're ready to go, Roger. Perfect, perfect. Okay. So, as as David was mentioning, and as I mentioned as well, uh, Corel Draw 2022, or the I call it 2022 as well. Uh, marketing has decided to drop the uh, the date convention. Actually, let me just. Um, I want to turn off my camera. There we go. Um, 2022 is is um, what marketing has uh, decided to remove from the pack. Oops. Can you get him back? 
His microphone might be coming through his camera. Do we need to call him? Um, maybe try again. Are you are you hearing me at all? Yes, we're hearing you. We we clicked something and it it stopped, but we can hear you now. Go ahead, Roger. Sorry and about you, that. And you're, seeing, and you're seeing my screen, all right? Yes, sir. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So as I was saying. Um, we, we have dropped the 2022 from the na naming convention. Uh, the current products that's available through Corel uh, is, uh, of course, Corel Draw 2021. Is still, you're still able to purchase that as a perpetual license. Of course, you can purchase from uh, Comedy as well, which, which we would prefer. Um, the, uh, you can also purchase the subscription. And um, David, not to... Uh, not to spill the, uh, the the beans too much or anything, but uh, we are we are working on a program where Condi will be able to sell subscriptions as well. Uh, but that's a whole other that's a whole other ball of wax. Uh, today I'm going to spend a, a bit of time going through some of the new features within the application, and uh, I'll just I'm just going to jump right in. The um, <clears throat> one of the first things I want to show is the Learn Docker. Now uh, most of you are familiar with the Hints Docker that we used to have. We've, uh, come, I'm getting a lot of feedback on my end. I'm not hearing any feedback on this end. Bo, okay. is anything on the live portion? It, it's almost as somebody else's mic is open. Okay, go ahead, Roger. Okay, um, so the, uh, the the Learn Docker has has replaced the Hints Docker. It's actually more incorporated the Hints Docker. The Learn Docker is accessible from the um, uh, the help menu as well as from Windows, Dockers, and then you can pick, pick it up in here uh, at, the, uh, at the very bottom. The Learn Docker gives you what was the Hints Docker, and this has been expanded to include uh, videos as well as webinars. The Learn Docker allows you to uh, search right within the application, and uh, to set that up when you first install the application, you'll get a, a two question survey. And that survey will look like this. Uh, <clears throat> simply click on start. We want to know what your level of experience is. So if you're an experienced CorelDRAW user, great. If you're new to CorelDRAW and select that, that's going to tailor the content that you find uh, towards the beginner level. The, uh, the next is what type of work are you doing in the application? Is it art and illustration? Is it branding? Is it page layout, uh, technical drawings? Select all that apply and uh, simply close that off. And now if I want to find out, for example, uh, I want to convert this to a symbol. I'm not sure how to do that. I can just type in here symbol. And I've lost my cursor. And now we, uh, it, it filters it for me. I can um, uh, learn how to create a new symbol, finishing and editing symbols. And here we have other suggested topics with respect to symbols. I can also filter and dictate what type of information I want to search from. So for example, I can get the, the, uh, the tool hints, written tutorials, videos. Maybe I only want to see videos. Uh, I can deselect these. And I'm only going to see information on uh, on the videos. Um, and so it's a great way to, to help me learn the application. Now, this uh, particular file I have opened up, uh, it's a, um, a marketing uh, company has decided that uh, they want to do a, a photo book, uh, the trip to Iceland. Uh, these images were actually shot by one of our uh, colleagues over in the UK uh, when she did a trip to Iceland. And so we're using that for this um, for this slide deck. Uh, but sh the idea was to create a photo book. And so we've done a whole marketing campaign around that um, and uh, allows me to you know, show some of the information and that sort of thing. The I'm going to jump into uh, photo paint right now to show you something new in there. And then we're going to kick it back into Corel Draw. So in photo paint, we've added um, an, a new Docker, or modified a new Docker rather, and that's called the adjustments Docker. Previously, if you wanted to do an adjustment, you come up to the adjustments tab, 
pick an option and it's going to open up a small dialog box on the screen that you play around with. You then dismiss it and you see the effect. What we've done is we've created a Docker for these adjustments. And I can, in here, I can access the various uh, elements. For example, if I go to white balance, I can adjust my temperature and you can see it's live. I can see that happening as I'm sliding it. I don't have to release the mouse uh, cursor or anything like that, uh, changing the tint and that sort of thing. Um, these three do these three uh, adjustments are on by default. So we have the white balance, the light and the uh, the color balance. In the light, I can adjust the uh, brightness, contrast, intensity, and that sort of thing. So it really makes it easy to, to modify these images, makes it quick. I'm going to collapse the white. If I go into the color balance, here you can see I can adjust the the color sliders on this to get various effects and you know add more red or let more cyan whatever the case may be there's a number of different sliders in here if i've gone through and made a number of changes then of course it's simply a matter of clicking a reset all and it will reset all of those all of those changes for me destructive kind of changes right i'm sorry are they non-destructive? Absolutely, um, yes. So, yeah, that, that's a good point, David. These are non-destructive changes. Uh, you can always take it back. You, you're not going to be modifying the orig original image unless you tell it you want to flatten the image. So there's an icon down or a button down here. I can click on that. Once I've done that, I'm committing those changes to this image, and they can't be undone at that time. But, uh, yeah, it's a good point. Um, <clears throat> under the Adjust menu, um, black and white, for example, uh, this will allow me to convert this, make it a, a black and white image. In here, I can uh, increase and decrease the contrast, that sort of thing, by adjusting the uh, the different channels. There's a fair amount of uh, green in this image, so adjusting that will adjust the green element of this of this image. We also have something called uh, split tone. Now, split tone allows me to uh, access different sliders. I'm going to bring up the saturation a bit. And so now I can simulate what we would what I would call a duotone image. A duotone is typically a, a, an image created with two spot colors. But here we have the ability to simulate a duotone image uh, by adjusting the, the saturation. I can then come along and I, I can adjust the hue as well as the highlights. If I come down here <clears throat> and um, increase the saturation for my highlights, I can actually get different colors at play here. And we can create some pretty stunning effects uh, depending on where I, I move these sliders along. So the adjustments docker is, is very, uh, it's a very powerful, uh, powerful feature with, with, uh, within this. Also in the adjustments docker, we have the ability to uh, select a preset. So in the drop down, there's a number of different presets in here I can select. Or if I wanted to, and let me just do a, a couple of undos to take it back. Just a second here. I've gone and I've closed those off. Just bear with me for a minute. So brightness, uh, white balance, I'm just going to change this around a little bit. I've gone through, I've modified some of this. Let me go back up to uh, black and white. And I want to go into the split tone. And let's say I happen to like this particular effect. Uh, I can click on the plus and create my own preset. So in here, I'm just going to call this Iceland. And I can put it in its own category. I'm going to create a new category. I'll call that category Iceland. And I'll click on Save. Now, if I come over here to this other image, 
I come through here, I can look at my presets. I can look in the Iceland category and I can apply that preset to uh, to this image as well. So if you cool. get great right color balances and all the rest of that, it's very easy to apply it to uh, a number of different images. I'm going to uh, get out of uh, Photo Paint, just minimize that. And we're going to go back to Corel Draw. In here, for example, I can go to my um, Properties Docker. And in the Properties Docker, um, <laughs> where did we move it? Oh, I see. That's because of a power clip I selected. I'll click on my effects docker. And in here, I have access to those same presets. Um, so, for example, I want to look in my Iceland. And there's the preset that I created in Photo Paint. And so I can use them in Photo Paint as well as in uh, Corel Draw. I couldn't do it initially because this is a power clip. I got into the power clip by using the control key. I'll get out of the power clip by clicking outside the container. And that will uh, that will take me out of the uh, the power clip edit power clip state. OK. The um, so with the presets, it gives you a lot of power and, and flexibility, the ability to do it both in, in photo paint uh, as well as in uh, as well as in Corel Draw. The next thing I want to show is multi page. Now, we've done enhancements to the multi page view for those that do multiple documents or multi page documents. We have the ability to do um, I call them mixed page sizes. So in here, for example, we have a banner uh, and this is showing in millimeters. Let me change this to inches. So here we have a banner that's 23 by 55. Here we have a video template that's 7 by 12, uh, business cards, uh, a LinkedIn um, image header, and that sort of thing. So multi-pages, this is a 14-page document. You can have up to 999 pages in a single document in Corel Draw. Uh, now, mind you, the, the, the type of content on these pages um, will uh, will determine the file size ultimate file size so if you had a a thousand page or a 999 page document with uh, high-res bitmaps on every single page then you're you're probably talking a, a fairly massive file uh, but with the multi-page document i can go into my pages docker which i happen to have open here if it wasn't open of course it's windows dockers down to pages i can also click on this quick customize icon right here and i can select the docker uh, from within here so in here we can see the various pages that i've got and uh, it allows me to go multi-page view or single page view and one of the enhancements that we've added to this is i can go to whatever image i want and it'll automatically uh, go to that now if i go back to multi-page view it's going to uh, zoom so that I can see all of my pages. Uh, if I select a specific page in here, I can uh, go to single page view and it's going to zoom to that page and allows me to access it. One more thing that we can do in multi-page view that makes it very useful is if I have content on one of the pages and I want to put it onto another page, I can certainly do that. It's just a matter of dragging and dropping. So I've moved it from uh, page one to page three. In here, I also have the ability to um, organize the pages. And uh, we're looking at a custom view right now. So in here, we've, we've got custom selected. I could do a grid layout where all these pages are, are organized in a grid um, or the, the custom layout, a straight line. Um, and uh, so again, it's very easy to, to do something like that. The um, the next thing is I want to talk a little bit about some of the bonus content that we have with the application. So from the uh, welcome screen, I can click on the, the get more uh, the store. Sorry, it used to be called get more. We now call it the store. And so there's a lot of content in here. Uh, if you're looking at doing a, um, maybe you've got a, a baby bib you're working on uh, that you want to, to sublimate, uh, you can go through here. And if you look at the various uh, clip art packs, we certainly have access to all of that in here. I just noticed uh, this as well. Uh, this is my Corel Draw 2021 Essentials Training uh, that I did through LinkedIn Learning. So you can access that directly from within Corel Draw. Uh, 
it is a subscription uh, um, a subscription but you can certainly uh, uh, sign up for the free 30-day trial and and uh, and go with that also in the store is uh, our, the ability to filter. So we can fil filter by new elements that have been added to the, uh, to the store, uh, special offers, uh, plugins, fonts, and, uh, and content. If I click on content, this is the content that ships with the product. So when you first install it, we see that you get uh, 10,000 clipart images, or sorry, 1,000 fonts and 10,000 clipart images and uh, photo, you know, stock photos and that sort of thing. This is how you access it. You can either click on content or click on free, and it will give you that, uh, that information. Once you've installed something, so for example, if I was to uh, uh, install the bitmap fills, it's simply a matter of clicking on download, install, and it's going to go through and it's going to install those for me. So I would then have access to those uh, in the application. If I go back to the store and I click on my library, this will show me what stuff I've already downloaded. And so you can see I've already downloaded quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of stuff in here. In the event that I have to remove and reinstall and I want to get all this content back, it's simply a matter of going into the help menu and um, restore purchases, and it'll automatically download that content again for you. Going back to my file here, um, one other feature that we've um, worked on is the the asset docker and uh, and with that as well as the uh, the uh, multi export to docker so the asset docker from the help menu or sorry from welcome uh, from the welcome menu down to dockers i'm going to select assets in here is where you can access your clip art images uh, once the, once they've been installed. You'll notice that we have a couple of other icons up here as well. For example, cloud assets. You'll notice on the standard toolbar at the top, we have the ability to uh, open, save, open from the cloud, save to the cloud. So each user of CorelDRAW from 2020, I think it was going forward, has a cloud storage space. Uh, if it's a subscription version, you also have additional features with respect to the, uh, the cloud in that you have uh, live commenting and that sort of stuff. I won't be covering live commenting in this session, but basically what that is, is if I go to, to launch a browser window here, If I go to CorelDRAW on app, and anybody with, um, I think it's CorelDRAW 2018 or later, uh, 2019 or later, has this ability, uh, go to CorelDRAW.app, and you simply log in with your uh, Corel credentials. And this is a drawing application in here where you can actually edit CDR files and uh, save them. They're stored in the cloud. This could be accessed from any web browser, whether it be on a Windows or a Mac system. Um, I'm not going to sign into that right now. Um, and all but, this is pretty much the same for the Mac version, Roger? Uh, yes, it is. Um, so you you have access to the CorelDRAW app on the Mac. Uh, there, of course, are, are some differences on the Mac version. For example, customization is quite limited on the Mac. Um, scripting is not available on the Mac. They use Publish and Subscribe, uh, and we use a JavaScript as well. Uh, on uh, Windows, it's uh, Vista and VBA uh, for scripting. Yes. Uh, in here, we have the cloud. So if I click on this, I can actually log into the cloud. And when I sign in, what it's going to do is it's going to sync with the cloud, and I'm going to be able to see a list or, or um, thumbnails for all of my uh, content that I have on the cloud. So there's a number of files up there. I've got uh, a couple of T-shirt uh, designs of the, a baby bib that I did uh, uh, for one of my colleagues, and uh, uh, Condi so graciously printed it out for me, and it was a big hit. But uh, so this is this is content that I have on the cloud uh, cloud now, and that's all part of the assets Docker. 
The uh, the last piece I'm going to show is the uh, the multi export. Now multi export we have that in 2021, but we've enhanced it quite a bit for 2022 by adding some other uh, uh, flavors of, of files that you can uh, export as. If I go to my Windows menu, down to Dockers. And then I'm going to go to export. This is going to open up my uh, export Docker. And let me just go back to this file here. We can see that uh, this particular image, this is going to be a header. Um, well, this is my Twitter, um, um, Twitter image. I'm going to click on this icon. It's going to add that to the list. Now, you'll notice that it's going to be exported as a JPEG image. Uh, I now have a couple of others in here. I have TIFF. I've got the uh, EPS and the uh, SVG have been added to, uh, to Corel Draw uh, Export Docker. I'm going to select PNG for this. I come in here for settings. Now we know this is for Twitter. We don't require a 300 DPI image. So we're going to knock this down to 96 DPI and I'll click OK. I can select another uh, another file or another page rather. In here, I have the ability to duplicate, and what that will do is it will duplicate this image, um, the, the the group of seven. It'll duplicate that, or I can add an asset with these settings. If I click add an asset with these settings, it's now add this object here, and uh, with the same settings as I have for that. Now. One of the enhancements that we've done with this, if I select a number of elements and I want all of these, bear with you for a second here. I want all of these to be added with the same settings. It's simply a matter of going in here and add assets with these settings. And it's gonna add all of those assets into the Docker for me. So I can now go through and, and uh, export those. Uh, one thing we've added is the ability to uh, delete this. So I don't want to export this element. Uh, I can simply hit the trash can and it will, it will, well, that wasn't nice. Um, simply hit the trash can and, and the it would delete the element. Uh, something happened there and it closed the application down for me. I'm going to have to check my events log uh, once I finish this session. We'll see what uh, we'll see what happened there. So bear with me while we read. Yeah. Question for you as you're as you're bringing it up: um, Is there anything new in uh, color charts or color palettes? Uh, no, uh, the so the color charts, color palettes are all. Um, th there's been no changes to those as of yet. Uh, I have heard that uh, um, Pantone is is doing away with the. No, was it Pantone is doing away with their color palettes, or they're no longer including the Pantone palettes with uh, Adobe Illustrator, um, with Corel Draw. We, however, have uh, have an arrangement with them where they will continue to uh, uh, include uh, the, the spot color palettes with uh, with Corel Draw. Now, my favorite, whatever way you pronounce the Pantone Go, um, and then of course the the uh, Corel Red chart that we worked on. Um, yes. Uh, those are those are certainly two of my favorites, plus the RGB default. Correct. Yes. Yeah. They 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 haven't they haven't changed at all. I'm having an issue opening this up, and it's come up. Yeah. A question for you as you're working on that. Um, yeah. For someone that that really wants to to embrace Corel, start learning Corel, but they they haven't started yet. Um, I know Corel has some great resources for. Um, sort of tutorials, mm -hmm. you know, learning methods. Um, maybe we could get a link and post that uh, resource uh, for folks that are interested in. Obviously, if you're no Corel and, you know, um, then, then you're always hungry for more, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, in, in our world, um, you know, making stuff that people want to buy is the key to life. And, Absolutely. you know, it really starts with graphics, um, mm -hmm. having a great substrate, great product to decorate uh, is then number two. And then, of course, number three is, you know, what's your sales and marketing strategy? Right. 
Yeah, uh, for, as far as uh, tutorials and, and, and that sort of thing, a, a good place to go to start off with would be um, learn.corel.com. Uh, that's the, the link to our discovery center. Okay, learn.corel.com. That's correct. Simply just learn.corel.com. And uh, let me just bring that up and I'll show you what that looks like. Both here where you can access uh, tutorials. Now, of course, we have other products that we, we do tutorials on, uh, but if you want a graphics tutorials, Corel Draw tutorials, you'll find those here. And uh, the uh, the one thing about the Learn Docker as well is it pulls information from here as well. And so the Learn Docker really is a, uh, if, you, if you have Corel Draw, uh, it's a great place to start in that it will uh, give you access to uh, the tutorials on, uh, on the Discovery Center and it will sort, you know, search, search through there for you. I'm just going to change this to PNG and I'm going to add these. So we've added these images back in. Uh, this is a banner. I want to print this. I'm going to... Uh, I want this one as a PDF file. And so I'll simply click on uh, this icon. That's now going to publish that to PDF. I can go through and as I, as I was trying to uh, delete, uh, delete an element uh, simply by hitting the trash can, I can um, select all or deselect all. Let's say, for example, I want to deselect all and I only want to export these three here, then I can certainly do that. Or I can hit this trash can and it will delete all that have been selected. So I'm just going to, well, I'll just leave those there. And let me scroll down a little bit. And we're going to grab the PDF file as well. So now when I export, I have the ability to dictate what folder I want to put those in. And I'm going to send these to uh, multi-export folder, select the folder, and I'll click export. So what's happening now is in the background, it's going through and it's taking all these pages and exporting them as individual PDF files. And then that way I can take these files and uh, go ahead and use them, whether it be on LinkedIn or Facebook, whatever the case may be. In the case of the PDF banner, I'm going to send that off to my printer and have them print me a banner for it. And uh, so really it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to do that sort of thing. That is basically what I've got for this session. I do apologize for having it so short, but um, I wanted to get the information out to you uh, as easily as possible, and this was the best way to do it. I'm going to go into that folder that I created for the multi-export, and if we take a look in here, you'll see that the files are uh, uh, have been exported to this. Uh, there's a lot in the list, but I only had a few of them selected, so that's why you're, that's why you're seeing that. So we can open it up for some question, more questions. Okay, Bo, um, I know, you know, the first question that comes to mind is um, if I've got an older version of Corel um, that maybe I didn't purchase from Condi, what are the rules about upgrading it to the new version? None. <laughs> so if you have an older version of Corel, uh, we don't ask if you wanted to purchase an, well, first of all, let's back, let's back up a step. Uh, there is no longer an upgrade version. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, we, so, we, we, so again, each version stands on itself. It's not upgradable. Okay. That's correct. Number that two correct. question is if I do buy the new version, am I able to continue to run the old version? Uh, yes, because it's, because it isn't an upgrade to a previous version. You have a license for that previous version. You can run that. So you would. Yeah. I'm speaking get just as a compatibility, you know, mm -hmm. um, because nothing is ever 100% compatible. Right. Um, so you can run multiple versions of Corel on your computer, I assume at the same time. Um, but typically, <clears throat> you'll never want to delete your old version, keep it around. Absolutely. Uh, right here, I have 20, uh, 2022. This one here is my 2021.5. Um, if you look at my desktop in here, I have uh, 2017. I've also got the standard edition and the essentials edition of Corel Draw. So I have multiple versions on my system. And in fact, if you look in here, my app data folder, 
you can see the different versions that I have here of uh, of Corel Draw. And I have in the past, not in quite some time, but when I was in support, I think at one, at one point I had I had eleven different versions on my system. Wow. Um, so yeah, so you can have multiple versions on the. Next same question system. is: um, If I buy the new version, um, am I able to install that on, say, two computers? The, there have been some changes to the licensing agreement. Uh, you can install it on two systems provided that they're not going to be used concurrently. So for example, you can install it on a laptop and your desktop system with the thought that if you're on the road talking to a client, you've got your laptop with you, you're using Corel Draw, you're not back at the shop using Corel Draw, and you don't have somebody else back at the shop using Corel Draw. It's not meant for two people. It's, it's meant for one person, but you can have it on two systems. And that's that's what I thought, of course. Yeah. So um, I think that's going to be typical. You know, I know I saw a couple of early questions about subscription or buy the software. Um, typically, Bo is pointing to something. Um, um, you know, will the 22 without a script? Yes, we sell it today. Um, so you can you can buy it. Uh, non-subscription version from us today, I believe. Um, I believe you're correct. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, which camp you're in, you know, for instance, we do have some Photoshop folks here. There's no choice there. We have to pay the subscription. But with, with Corel, we did ask that we be allowed to sell the software. And that is the case. And that would give you uh, two installs um, to be used non-concurrently. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's pretty much, you know, that's what everybody wants. Yeah. Um, if you need more than two because you got more than one person, then, you know, you're, you're going to be buying another license. Um, so, um, Bo, what, what else? What's... Hey, um, Roger, we got Jerry on here. Okay. Um, she is wondering if you can explain the differences uh, between uh, purchasing and subscription, like I guess the, the positives and the negatives and how to do them. Sure. So if you purchase the product, uh, before I get into that uh, that question, I just want to point this out to you. You, uh, you mentioned Photoshop. Uh, I'm in Photo Paint right now. And of course, you know, we use workspaces. In Photo Paint, we do have a Photoshop workspace. So this will set up Photo Paint to, to have it look like, uh, like Photoshop. Also under the help menu, if I go to product help, right down the very bottom references, uh, have uh, Adobe uh, Photo Paint for uh, Photoshop users comparing terminology and comparing tools. Okay, so with respects to uh, per perpetual versus subscription, you the current version uh, we we do not have we no longer have a perpetual version of the latest build of Corel Draw. Uh, it is subscription only. So the 2022 is subscription only. There is no perpetual version. So that's that's number one. And number two, uh, the perpetual version currently is 2021.5, sorry, 2021. And um, that is the, that's the, the build you would be getting. It's a perpetual license. It does not have the new bells and whistles. It doesn't have the new features that 2022 has. The subscription is, um, it's a nominal amount each month. I'm not sure what the pricing is on that, but um, you can, you can uh, purchase the subscription version. Uh, subscription version will give you the latest and greatest. And we are on a roadmap to have a, uh, uh, a dot release every six months. So the subscription is, a, uh, Curl Draw currently is an annual release. Uh, typically, it's in, in March, March time frame each year. And then uh, usually July, August will be a, an update. Uh, so it'd be 2022.5 if you're following the old naming convention. And that will have additional features that 2022 does not have. So you're getting the latest and greatest and you're keeping current with the new features that are in the application with the subscription. Uh, the other side of it is if you decide you no longer want to use CorelDRAW, you simply stop the subscription. Um, you have the ability to go by month or by year. And that's, I, I guess that's, that's about it. So it's, it's, um, 
very much like many things in life. It, it's a, it's a decision. Um, and, um, you know, usually people have an opinion one way or another, mm -hmm. um, about it. If, if you're really into making sure you keep your version current, you've got all the latest and greatest features, um, which is occasionally a bad thing because, um, many times you fix one thing, add something new and break something else. Um, That's with any application. And, and so, you know, again, it is really going to come down to you. Um, you know, around here, I tend to want to buy the software, mm -hmm. uh, but I certainly can relate to the folks that um, enjoy a subscription. Um, you know, money wise, I'm not sure how this subscription goes um, along with, um, with just purchasing the software. So probably have to look at that. But typically, if you keep software, let's say you upgrade every two years. Um, well, you know, you're probably better off buying the software, I think. But then again, you know, uh, subscriptions mm -hmm. um, will, will help you. Um, if you have, can you run? Uh, Jerry, the, or not Jerry, um, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just typed Jerry a question in there. Uh, oh, yes. We have Becky on Facebook here, and she's wondering if you have the subscription, can it be run on two computers at the same time, or do you need to buy two licenses? I will have to verify that. I don't have the answer to that question. So, so most likely, you know, they allow your main computer and a laptop scenario to be used non-concurrently. In other words, can't use them at the same time. Um, but Roger can check and see what the letter of the law is. But I certainly would bet lunch that that's the, that's the way it is. Um, I mean, to me, Corel has been fairly kind to its users over the years. That's why we've continued to enjoy this relationship because, um, you know, Corel wants to help people be successful um, in bringing out new versions of software, innovating with new features is part of life. Um, so by the way, the feature you were showing us in photo paint, is that sort of the equivalent of, can it be turned into more of a macro where you could add additional, um, changes to photos? Uh, are you referring to the adjustments Docker? Yeah. For instance, you know, we're, 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 let's say we're preparing a, a, uh, photo for printing. We're mm -hmm. going to convert it to um black and white and when we're finished we want to put it into an rgb format okay so what you can do is you go to the windows menu down to dockers and then down to recorder you start your recorder and any changes i make to this document can then be saved once i save it i'm going to trash that just stop it um so I'm going to take this, I'll go uh, image, um, uh, convert to palleted 8-bit, for example. So I've find... used this feature sparingly before, I believe, um, but but um, may, maybe not just totally comfortable, but it looks easy to use. Yeah, so I just hit the stop button. I'm going to save this, and I'm just going to call this 8-bit. Okay, save. Now, if I have a number of images, I can go file, batch process. And in here, I can browse to the, the files that I want to manipulate. I'll just grab these two for grins and giggles. And I can add a script. Cool. So this is the script I want to use. I'll click OK. I can save it as type. When I click on play, um, it's going to save it to my pictures folder. Let me make sure I know exactly where it's going. Okay, right to the root of it. Okay. And I'll click on play. So it's going to take those images. It's going to open them up. It's going to apply that script to it, and it's going to save them out. Um, cool. Oh, I haven't opened more than once, I guess. And and would Corel Draw also have this feature? I assume it does. Yes, it does. <clears throat> Corel has the feature as well where you can record macros like that. Absolutely.
Uh, so if I go into my pictures folder now, these are the two images I just uh, put in there. Cool. So yeah, so it's, uh, the ability to record is, is certainly in the application, and it's been there for well at least at least since Corel Draw six. It's been have in Draw ever, since Draw six. Have you thought about updating your book? <laughs> Great question. Um, <clears throat> I've thought about it, but uh, I'd need to find a publisher for it before I did that. Well, just publish it on Amazon. Yeah, it took me almost a year to write that. <laughs> oh, writing books is is no fun and it's difficult it is it is and i was doing evenings and weekends i didn't do it during the day that was uh that was uh that wasn't my day job i did, I did that evenings and weekends and i actually took vacation on to uh, well i certainly enjoyed reading it a couple of times Excellent. and um, learned a lot um what version of corel was it written for it was it was it wasn't written for a specific version i tried to keep it version agnostic but it was written during the corel draw x6 cycle Okay. So the screen caps that are in there for CurlDraw X6. And and about what year was that? Oh, about twelve about twelve years ago now, I think. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Um, other questions. So, I mean, to an extent, I've I talked to a fair number of people that are, are Macintosh folks. Um and um and so they're considering Corel Draw, but it, it's when I run it on my Mac, it's pretty much painless. It just mm -hmm. it just runs, and the features that are not there, I wouldn't normally use anyway. Yeah the um, the, the the biggest the biggest um, uh, pain point that I'm hearing from Mac users is that the keyboard shortcuts are not the same uh, on the Mac versus the Windows system. That being said. You can now customize keyboard shortcuts on the Mac, so you can make them like the uh, uh, like the, the Windows systems. Uh, getting back to that other question you had with respect to perpetual license and installing on multiple systems, I've got my answer back. Uh, as long as the same email address is used for both installations, and that they're not used concurrently, uh, then it's not a problem. Yeah, that's I would have bet lunch. Um, yeah. So. Um, um so as far as the the internal color architecture within Corel everything is the same no changes as far as printing goes uh color charts um color profiles all that has stayed the same right all that stays the same that's correct that's my understanding and that's good because you know we we uh, we rely on that architecture mm -hmm. Is there a student version of these products? No, there isn't. Now, when you say student version, are you talking educational licensing? No, uh, there was, they were selling, Corel was selling a, a true student version. Okay, yes. Which no. looked like they had removed color management from it. Okay, so no, we no longer, that was called the Home and Student. Uh, we, we've dropped the Home and Student. We have Corel Draw Essentials and Corel Draw Standard. Uh, and they are, uh, pared down quite a bit. Uh, for example, the print dialog box, um, you don't you don't have your, your pre-press tab where you can mirror your design. So if you wanted to mirror your artwork for sublimation, you don't have that ability. Uh, you can, however, mirror it right on the screen itself. Uh, but um, the print dialog box is scaled back quite a bit. Publish a PDF is, is not there. Uh, so print, print merge is not is, there. That is a product you sell. I don't recommend people buy it because it doesn't fit with what we need i, I would agree with that. on the screen is you know somewhat of a pain yeah uh, yeah i i would i would uh, wholeheartedly agree with that uh, david uh it's not the uh, it's not the application for for a business and uh well just to show you we do have a bit of time i think um so this is curl draw essentials it's very much similar to the curl draw standard edition i think it's just a different price point but um you'll see when i launch it the contour tool is not there uh, so there are some tools that are missing um let me just go to here and we'll open up this file so if i was to print this you can see that my print dialog box 
print is currently unavailable. Thank you very much. So my print dialog box is really scaled back quite a bit. Um, I've got the two tabs and that's it. Um, even the layout tab, I've only got half the, the content that's there um, from the uh, from Corel Draw uh, full version. Um, question while you're doing that. Um, yep. Is that... Is that Linda Miller? Yeah. Okay. Roger, Linda's wondering if everything that you said today, um, all these new features are going are in the Corel Draw 2021 that Condi sells. No. Well, let, let's talk about that. We don't sell the 2021 anymore. Um, we we may have some old ones, but we sell the kind uh, the Corel Draw 2022. And as I understand it, the 2022 is software you buy. So, so it's, it's, um, you know, you buy it once, it's yours. No, no, no. Sorry. No, if you're selling 2022, that is subscription only. Well, and, and I, I absolutely could be wrong. Um, and I guess we need to clarify that it says 2022 and it's priced like 2021. So, uh, I'll, I'll have Ryan reach out to you. So need need to find out, yeah. um, but it was my understanding that it was it was it, it was the first release of 2022, um, where the subscription got a new release uh, in March. Um, that that added a few new features that are not in the the version we sell. That that was my impression. Absolutely, could be wrong. I guess we need to need to clarify that. I can yeah. look on our website. Um, I'll reach out to uh, to Ryan and have him give you a call. You've spoken with Ryan before. Um, I think I've I've had some email correspondence, okay. but um, I'm, I'm not not sure. Okay. So yeah, we we can get the, we can get a resolution to that question. Not a problem yeah. at all. Uh, what are the questions, Bo? That's all we got. Okay, I'm looking through our product offering. Um, I mean, I see the Mac version of 2022, mm -hmm. and it appears to be, you know, real software. Oh. The Mac and PC are the same software now. Um, that's that, that's a, that's another valid point. Uh, so yes, it's now a, a hybrid download. So the serial number you have, you would use on a Mac or on a PC, either system. Yeah. And so as far we, as licenses go, you can install one on the Mac, one on the PC. We sell we sell this for two sixty nine, um, which seems like a really good price. Um, and so if it was a subscription, I guess that would be for one year. But yeah, that's, that's correct. It, it does not say that it's a subscription. So um, I think we've got some some just to, to verify um, so everyone knows. And we can post um, somehow. Right. Um, but I, ne I do not see, unless my eyes are deceiving me, which they typically do, I do <laughs> not see um on here where it uses the word subscription now you're looking at your own website yes okay um it's got a nice long corel part number you know as usual um so you know in the part number 2021 is in the part number 2021 is in the part number, then that wouldn't be 2022. Uh, here's the Corel dot. Here's the Corel Draw website. Now this is Canadian pricing. Okay. So we have a one-time purchase of 594. That's your 2021 version. Or you have the subscription, 2450 a month, or 294 per year. Now again, this is Canadian pricing. Okay. Well, sounds like we're selling the subscription. I need to find out. I apologize yeah. for not. No worries. Prepared with these answers, but we mm -hmm. will get you answers. Um, but I was under the impression that we were selling the software, and so I'll 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 
get confirmation one way or another. Sure. Uh, other questions, uh, Rodeo Bo? Oh, the book. So is your book available anywhere, Roger? Uh, it sold out about two years ago. That being said, uh, I found a cache of them at work the other day. <laughs> and so I can, uh, I'll have to see what's happening with those. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, that's a challenging because you're in Canada, obviously. Right. Um, uh, figuring out, well, think about what, what might be done. Um, I found the book easy to read. Mm -hmm. I found the book to be, you know, again, generic from a version point of view, which I appreciated. Um, but Corel has moved things around in Corel a lot over these, you know, I guess 15, 16 years. We do almost um, every version. <laughs> Yeah, and so it's a little bit challenged, but it did go over some of the fundamentals. But I think even some of the fundamentals now have changed, uh, you know, somewhat drastically. Certainly the color engine was redone completely, um, which is, you know, part I, I like. Yeah, that was redone. Um, in, that was redone with CorelDRAW X6. That was uh, that was the uh, actually no it was done in CorelDRAW X5 the the uh, oh uh, redo so the color engine yeah okay and it was the fonts it was the font engine that was redone in CorelDRAW gotcha. X5. Gotcha. Now one word to all our Corel users out there, um, if you're buying a printer, uh, sublimation printer or whatever, um, we of course would love for you to buy it from us. Ultimately, that printer, for it to operate at its maximum capability color wise gamut you know profile um, it may require some special setup um, and so you know call us for instance those that purchase an, an epson f-series printer um, you absolutely need setup help um, not going to happen by itself corel will not know how to print best to the Epson printer. You have to choose that as Roger talked about on the, in this case, the color tab. Um, it has to be set up correctly, both in Corel and in the, the uh, printing preferences in the printer folder. Um, and that's really both Mac and PC. Um, Mac is a little bit more complicated um, for some reason. So bottom line is, um, once you do get your settings and you like your color, you print, you, you know, I would print some, some, uh, the, the default RGB palette. I would print a photograph like a calibrate, um, and then take out your phone and take pictures of the screens, um, both in Corel color management and in the printer driver so that you know what they're supposed to look like because, very often when updates occur on your PC or Mac, they can completely remove all your custom settings. Um, and then, you know, you're like, what happened? What went wrong? And you're fiddling with your heat press, you know? So um, when you do have a problem, especially in sublimation, the issue is gonna be at the computer, at the printer or at the heat press. And sometimes it's hard to tell you know, where the issue is coming from. Um, so, you know, that's that's what we do here. That's that's how we can help you. What you're seeing on the screen right now, uh, David mentioned about uh, printing out the RGB palette. Uh, this is a macro that we have in Corel Draw. So from the tools menu, scripts, run script. And in here, we're going to select the um, color chart creator. And if you run that, uh, whatever palette you want to have used here must be open on the right hand side before I do that. You can see I only have access to two palettes right now. One is my document color palette and the other is the, the default color palette. So make sure you have the RGB palette opened up on the right hand side. And when you create that, it will create an RGB sheet that you can then go ahead and print yep. and see your colors. So so this is this is a cool feature. Um, love it. So what I've done, Roger, and I'm sure you already know this, is I built the color charts and they're in the support section um, at Condi at, mm -hmm. you know, guytrans.com. And the reason is, is because um, I just 
tightened up the space and made everything sort of fit. So that chart fits on a landscape letter size page. Um, and my favorite part of this chart is that top line, which is, which is, we'll call it grayscale RGB. And um, if you get good grays out of your sublimation system, then, then it's working correctly because it's essentially impossible to get a good gray if, if your colors are not balanced. Um, and so what's a gray? A gray is where when you go to like info and you ask it, what color is this? The RGB values are all the same, like 20, 20, 20. Um, that means it's a gray. Um, and then, you know, looking at those last colors, the, the, you know, where you're down to a black, which is a zero, 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 um, we're looking for a good black. Now, very often you won't get a good black and everything really is hooked up right. It's configured. And the reason is um, that you need to dry the darn transfer paper. So if you take a piece of paper and print, and you put a bunch of black on there, it's like paint. It, it's going to dry relatively slow. And when you think it's dry, it's really not dry. So you need to put the transfer underneath your heat press, press for 10, 15 seconds for a small print um, to make sure the ink is dry. If you don't dry the ink, when you press it, it just goes crazy. Um, and you'll get, you'll get weird effects, especially blowout, you know, kind of stuff. Um, in addition, um, for your area where you work, install full spectrum light bulbs. Um, you know, if you're like a lot of us, you live under a green fluorescent light. Well, guess what? The colors will not look correct. Um, you have to sort of go outside to look at your colors. So, um, you know, be aware that there's a tad bit more to, to color than, than what you think. And this is my best tip I can leave with you, and that is document, write things down. When you have a concern, when you have a question, when something happens that you don't understand, um, then, then, then document it, and you can, of course, ponder it. You could ask people, you could ask us, um, and very often if you'll document it, guess what? You'll figure it out yourself. You know, you'll, you'll put the, you know, you'll, you'll connect the dots, so to speak. Um, so um, where is the color palette? They, it's in the support area on ditrans.com. Um, and really it's three charts, I believe. We have the, what I call the default RGB, uh, which is the one on, on Roger's screen, the Pantone Go, GOE, and then the, um, the red chart, um, and these are in PDF format, and they're formatted for letter size images. Um, so they're they're very convenient. And um, Roger and I spent a lot of time. Who was the guy that it was? It was it Millsaps? I'm trying to think of his name that I worked with on the red for a long time. Uh, yeah, David David Millsock. Okay, nice guy. So yeah. for Brad, American. Yeah, red really is a challenge for most people. And if you're sitting behind your monitor clicking on colors, trying to find the right color, guess what? It's probably not going to work very well. So um, working with David, we came up with this um, um, red, you know, collection of red colors, and it's pretty good. And um, and you can download it, open it, and print it. Um, if Corel will know that these colors are really in Corel. So when you when you open it, it knows it knows its home. Now, can you print from any program? You can. So any program that would accept a PDF, um, you know, you can you can open the chart. But if you open it in Corel, it knows what the colors are as far as that they're part of this this palette. And I guess Roger, you're trying to. Find the uh, red chart, I guess. I, I've right. got it here. So this is super cool. Uh, great feature. Um, if you see an odd, you know, palette that you want to build a, um, a color chart. So a palette is a collection of colors. 
And a color chart is taking those colors from the palette and building something you would print. Yep, there it is. So, um, you know, again, I find it valuable um, because everybody is looking for a different red. You know, I'm sure there's a there's a joke somewhere there. <laughs> but, you know, whether it's a fire engine red, a Coke red, um, um, a a Tesla red, you know, with their their new Roadster, got a beautiful shade of red. But at any rate, um, I think this is a pretty good start to finding it. Why would you want to print a color chart? It's because nobody has a perfect monitor. And what you're really after is not a perfect monitor. You just simply want to know how it's going to sublimate. And so if you're matching a school color, what's the best way to do that? Print a darn color chart, sublimate it, go get something from the school that has the color on it, hold it up against the chart, pick the color that matches, reopen the chart, choose that color in, in Corel. And it is amazing how well it works. And guess what? There isn't anything else that I know of that works. So it's, it's your plan A and there's no plan B. Other questions and we will wind this down. So Jerry is asking, do we print these on fabric? Yes. So fabric is, a, is an excellent way. Um, as you progress, you could print on a couple of substrates. I typically print my color charts on white <laughs> chromolux metal and fabric. Um, and uh, usually it's just a matter of intensity to an extent uh, that varies. Some substrates, the tint changes. Um, and so it, it just depends on, um, you know, which, which substrate your client is going to buy, but, um, you know, white 100% polyester fabric and <coughs> you're going to use that Sharpie marker, um, to date the print, you know, date the substrate and indicate any information so that you can reproduce it. Um, and so typically what I do is I'll give it a number and then in my journal, I will describe for number 78, how did I do that? You know, uh, what version Corel was I using? Um, you know, details so that I can reproduce that, um, say, a year later. Well, Roger, I want to thank you for being with us, as always, and um, continue in good health. And, thank you. Um, we will get back together in the near future. That's my pleasure. Thank you very much, ladies and, and gentlemen. And I guess near future is the virtual open house. So that'd be next month. Everybody sign up for that. Mm -hmm. And it, I promise to give you something rather interesting. You got it. Thank you, Roger. You take care. All right, David. Take care. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen.